Good morning. I'm Reverend Alexis and I want to welcome you to worship this morning. Thank you so much for spending some of your time with us as we continue to celebrate this Advent season. We're going to move through to chapter two of Adam Hamilton's book on incarnation. And I am excited to let you know that Shannon Meister will be preaching today. Shannon is one of our active lay people and I have been blessed to be able to work closely with her since arriving here at Broadway. She also preaches at churches in the area and it's just good to hear other vo voices in the pulpit. So thank you to Shannon and thank you to all the other staff and volunteers that have made this morning's worship possible. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome to worship on this second Sunday in Advent. We welcome you to worship at Broadway United Methodist Church as we continue to hear the Advent story preparing for Christmas, preparing to receive the good news of Jesus Christ once again. Let us join together as we open the service with our opening prayer. Sing and rejoice, O daughter Zion. For lo, I will come and dwell in your midst, says the Lord. Many nations shall join themselves to the Lord in that day, and shall be my people, and I, dwell, I will dwell in your midst. For the lighting of the Advent wreath, our, our scripture reading for the second Sunday comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verse 4. John was in the wilderness calling for people to be baptized to show that they were changing their hearts and lives and wanted God to forgive their sins. We light this candle as a symbol of Christ, the way. May the word sent from God through the prophets lead us to the way of salvation. O come, O come, Emmanuel. And now let us join together in that song, O come, O come, Emmanuel. Mourns in 
second Sunday of Advent. I thought we would talk about candy canes today, um, which serve as a symbolic reminder of the reason for the season. Um, legend has it, a choir master over in Europe in the 1600s invented the first candy cane, but he called it a sugar stick. He was looking for something to occupy the children's time while they sat during services. And that's probably worked out really well for him. Um, they also made their way over to the United States and a candy maker in Indiana also um, had a hand in that invention as well. He wanted something for children and adults uh, to serve as a reminder the reason for the Christmas season and what better, better thing to do than to invent some candy because everybody knows um, a candy cane looks like the letter J but it also looks like a shepherd's hook. The very first people, some of the very first people to see Jesus once he was born are shepherds. And those are just hardworking people and they were very humble. And it was an incredible honor for them to see Jesus after he was born. The color white is for the purity. The color red on this candy cane is for the blood that was shed for us by Jesus. So this is a good reminder for this season of what candy canes are for and what they mean. So anytime you see a candy cane, and it doesn't necessarily have to be red or white, just remember, flip it around, it could be a shepherd's hook or the letter J. And that's just a simple reminder for the birth of Jesus, which is why we have our Christmas season. Pretty easy, huh? Let's say a prayer um, and we'll wrap it up. Gracious and loving God, we are thankful for those visual reminders of the reason for this holiday season for the birth of your son, Jesus. We are so thankful that he was here on earth for us and he died for our sins. Thank you, God, for giving us your one and only son. As we make our way through this holiday season, God, help us to remember that the season isn't about parties and gifts and wrapping presents. It's about the birth of your son. Thank you, God, for this day and for this opportunity for us to be connected. In your name we pray. Amen. See you next week. Let us join now together in our prayer from illumination as we prepare to hear the word of God through scripture. Merciful God, you sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance, to prepare the way for our salvation. Give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with the joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first scripture reading comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 1, uh, verses 20 and 21. As he was thinking about this, an angel from the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife, because the child she carries was conceived by the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you will call him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. The second scripture reading comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 8 through 12. Nearby, shepherds were living in the fields, guarding their sheep at night. The Lord's angels stood before them. The Lord's glory shone around them, and they were terrified. The angels said, don't be afraid. Look, I bring good news to you, wonderful, joyous news for all people. Your Savior is born today in David's city. He is Christ the Lord. This is a sign for you. You will find a newborn baby wrapped snugly and lying in a manger. Here ends the reading. Spirit of God, stir up your people. Thanks be to God. And let us join in our centering hymn in the bleak midwinter.
When were you saved? Can you tell the story of the time and place you were saved? These are often questions or words you might hear at a fair where people are proclaiming the need to be saved. Or more recently, I heard this from a group proclaiming on the street about being saved with posters in tow. But you have to admit, it sounds a bit funny coming out of my mouth, doesn't it? As United Methodists, especially in the Midwest, we don't often use this kind of language to talk about our faith. Nevertheless, the word saved or saving is used in the New Testament about 150 times. And we talk about things like Jesus as our savior and saving grace. Our hymn of amazing grace states, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. And we sing hymns like savior, like a shepherd lead us. Jesus's name means God saves, God delivers, or God helps. Did you know that even though the New Testament represents only about a quarter of the Bible, Jesus' name appears over 1,600 times? This is more than any other person mentioned in the Bible, and each time his name appears, we're reminded that Jesus is our Savior and our Deliverer. In Matthew, when the angel appears to Joseph, he's told to name his son Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. And later, when the angel appears to the shepherds in the fields in Luke, they're told that in the city of David, a savior is born. So all this talk about saviors and saving, it leads us to the question of what exactly are we saved from, right? Why do we need saving? Well, did you hear about the little boy who was finishing his Christmas list to Santa? He wanted to make sure that he had all his bases covered. So he decided to write to Jesus also. He wrote, Dear Jesus, I just want you to know that I've been good for six months now. Then it occurred to him that Jesus knew better. So he scratched out six months and wrote three months. As he pondered this some more, he replaced the word months with the word weeks so that it read three weeks. He still was not satisfied with this. So he put down his paper and pencil and he went over to the nativity scene in front of the family's mantle and picked up the figure of Mary. He got out a clean sheet of paper, he grabbed his pencil, and he wrote, Dear Jesus, if you ever want to see your mother again, if we're truly honest with ourselves, we're not perfect. We're human, right? We're flawed, and we need saving more times than we would like to admit. We can be selfish, we can be vain or prideful, especially at this time of year, we can be kind of gluttonous. I know my pants are fitting a little tighter after Thanksgiving than they were before. We can get impatient or angry about some really silly things sometimes. Because if we were perfect, we wouldn't have prisons or people going hungry on a daily basis. We wouldn't have domestic abuse cases or dishonesty Although we often know right from wrong, we still sin. And thank God Jesus was sent to save us from our sins. And through this process of saving us from our sins, we grow as Christians. We grow in our faith. In other words, we are hopefully and continually becoming better people as we work towards becoming more like Christ. The deeper we grow in our faith, the more injustice we see in our world, and the more we want to be part of the solution. We are saved from our tendency to sin. So Jesus saves us and helps us become better people, and he forgives us. We know this because we ask forgiveness in the Lord's Prayer, right? When we say, forgive us our sins or trespasses, as we forgive those who sin or trespass against us. While there are natural consequences to our sins, we can try to make amends here on earth. And when we ask for forgiveness from God or Jesus, we are truly forgiven. Christ's death on the cross demonstrates how much we are loved by God, no matter what. And God frees us when he forgives us. He frees us from our guilt, our shame, our alienation from God that we often feel when we sin. He tells us that we are truly worthy. 
We know that Christmas isn't a time when everyone feels happy and cheery. It can be a rough time for a lot of families and a lot of people, especially at this time of year, when we're encouraged to stay apart for each other's safety. It's easy to feel hopeless and helpless and overwhelmed, like there is no light at the end of the tunnel. But all of Jesus' life, his ministry, his parables, his death and resurrection, were to show us our value and our worth and to give us hope. Do you remember who Jesus hung out with? He hung out with fishermen and prostitutes, tax collectors, demon-possessed people, lepers. Essentially, he hung out with sinners and outcasts who had been humiliated, who had suffered tremendous loss or suffered tremendous failures, or maybe just people who simply felt alone. He not only valued and ministered to them, but he loved each and every one of them. If he can do that for those people a couple thousand years ago, he surely values and loves us just as much. Remember, part of Jesus' incarnation, his being here on earth with us, was to walk with us, speak to us, and demonstrate his love to us. No matter how insignificant or lonely you might feel, you are wanted, you are valued, you are loved. I don't think we hear this enough, but it's so true. Things may not work out like you're expecting or hoping. Heaven knows 2020 hasn't worked out like we were expecting, right? But I'm a firm believer that with God, things do work out, and sometimes even better than we'd expected or planned. There's a Point of Grace Christmas song that I just love. Google it if you get a chance, because it's beautiful. It's called Love Came Down. The chorus states, close your eyes and share the dream. Let everyone on earth believe. The child was born, the stars shone bright, and love came down at Christmas time. And love came down at Christmas time. Love came down in the most unlikely of places, surrounded by stinky animals and smelly shepherds who were some of the first visitors. Love grew up and showed himself by healing the sick, forgiving sinners, telling children how much they're valued, feeding the hungry, socializing with people we might not want to socialize with, and saving us from our sins and ourselves. And then love gave himself for us on a cross. He stretched out his arms, and he told us that it didn't matter what we've done or how we feel. We're loved and we're valued and we're forgiven. Death does not have the final word, and that changes everything. It's been a hard few months, right? And I'm afraid, and I fear, the next few months aren't going to be a whole lot better or easier. I want to see so many of you. I miss your faces and your smiles. I want to hug you because I'm a hugger. But in the meantime, try to relish the Christmas season. You are not alone. A baby boy came to bring us joy, to save us from our sins, to give us meaning and hope and love. That is why we proclaim him Savior. Thanks be to God. Amen. And Merry Christmas. As we've heard the good news of Jesus Christ for ourselves, our personal selves, our church, our community, we now take a time to ask that you consider your financial gifts to the church. And even in this season, how we can support the mission and the ministries of Broadway United Methodist Church. We thank you for the financial gifts that you have entrusted with us. We also thank you for your prayers, for your service, for your witness. And so now we are going to hear a little bit of offering as we um, pray for our church and as... We thank you for all the ways that you are part of Broadway United Methodist Church. City sidewalks, busy sidewalks, dressed in holiday style. In the air there's a feeling of Christmas. 
children laughing, people passing, meeting smile after smile, and on every street corner you hear silver bell, silver bell. It's Christmas time in the city. Ring a ling, hear them ring. Soon it will be Christmas Day. Oh, holy night. The stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and arrow pining till he appears and the soul felt its worth. The thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices, for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Fall on your knees, oh hear the angel's voices, oh no. Christ was born, oh, night divine, when Christ was born, silent night, holy night. Alexis and I uh, consider it a, an honor and a privilege to be your pastors, to be entrusted with um, everything that happens in the life of a church and in the, your individual lives. We ask that you keep communicating with us, that you reach out to us when you need prayer, um, that you reach out to us when you have good things, joys in your lives that you'd like to share. That as uh, we continue as a church, sharing everything in our lives like we would a family because indeed we are a church family 
We know that these seasons of Christmas bring up, bubble up a lot of emotions. And so just know that we are with you. Just as Christ is with you, just as we pray together. And so let us now join together in our time of prayer. God of ages, we praise you. For in the dawn of time, you created the world, sending light by your word to dispel darkness. In Jesus Christ, you began a new creation, sending him to be the light of the world, to drive away fear and despair, to rule in peace and justice, holiness and love. Especially today, we thank you for the order and the beauty of your creation. for coming in Jesus Christ to share our human life. For the place you give us in your continuing creation. For the promise of peace among nations and justice for all peoples. for the church as the sign of your coming kingdom. Mighty God, prepare the world for your rule, for we long for the day where there shall be no more crying or tears and death will be destroyed. Help us to share in the ministry of Christ and be agents of his compassion. Especially we pray for the nations of the earth and peace in this world. For victims and survivors of violence. For those who are sick and suffering. For our families and friends. For the church and those who serve in Christ's name. All of this we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And now let us join together praying in the words that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
May we go forth today carrying that Christmas story in our hearts. That so long ago, God sent his only son to be with us, Emmanuel. Through all the pain, the trials, the joys, the temptations of life, God is with us. And what a gift that is. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen.